Thanks for having me, Kelly. Do you mind just providing a, a follow-up reaction to what David was just reporting and what's happening with the equity of First Republic here? What does that tell you? Well, look, I mean, it, you know, there's a systemic issue across the banking um, sector with weakness, with maturity mismatch. So if you're a equity holder, obviously you're going to look for the exits apparently by like trying to mark to market balance sheets. And I think, you know, regulators have a real challenge ahead of them uh, by getting like real equity numbers, real uh, accounting numbers in front of the marketplace. Right now, there's, uh, you know, the, the way a regulatory capital goes, um, you know, by not including the, uh, you know, accumulated other comprehensive income as they're not allowed to do um, under a 2013 change in the capital rules, uh, the markets, there's not like a true picture. Silicon Valley Bank, for instance, was well capitalized on the day it failed. Same thing with Signature. So, you know, there, there's there's fear um, and, and people are going to typecast banks and you, know, you can have all the liquidity you want if people don't think the bank's solvent. Uh, people are going to look for the exits and, and the liquidity facilities will just fund the run, basically. Would the disclosure of deposit flight or lack thereof go a long way here? And is its, is its lack of disclosure itself one of the key problems? Well, I think that would help, right? Because I think, again, in, in this type of situation where you have like funding facilities that, that people may not know the entire um, you know, story of what they are and how they're collateralized, um, and what the business is going to look like in the future, that's the key to what an equity value is, right? It's not like what it is today or there might be stabilization. It's what the bank's going to look in like six, nine months, five years for that matter. And I think there's a lot of betting that there's a lot of rearranging going on in the banking sector and that banks aren't going to look the same in, in six months, nine months, let alone five years. And that obviously goes into play to what an equity value is or, or the price of long-term debt. Our last guest, uh, Caitlin Long, suggested that the Fed would not permit anything other than the fractional reserve banking system. Um, is that the case? I mean, if I wanted to start a bank tomorrow and said, instead of fractional reserve banking, I'm just going to charge you, Keith, uh, $50 a month for my services, and I'm going to hold, uh, you know, one-to-one dollars against your deposits, could such a company like that get a charter? Um. Good question. I mean, I think, you know, all the options are going to have to be on the table after this. This was a thought, you know, even dating back to my days at Wharton in the early 90s that, you know, scholars had thought about. And, and clearly, fractional reserve banking system introduces the risk of runs, uh, which is why we have this uh, heavy apparatus of, of banking regulation, which I've spent my life, uh, you know, in, in expertise in. But like, over time, you may have more stable ways to do this if if things are fully collateralized, uh, but you know nothing's free from risk, right? I mean, as we saw with the stablecoin issue, uh, you have to put your money somewhere. Uh, you can put your money in a bank, uh, and the bank may lose money. Uh, you may put your money in treasury bills. The treasury bill market may seize up or or go sideways. So you know those are all all you know issues that are going to arise. I think with any uh, sort of uh, financial intermediary function and. And those are the risks that have to be um, dealt with both at the institution level and, and at the larger regulatory level.